Okay, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be tackling a, kind of a project that I'm putting together. Um, it is putting a fireplace into the, electric fireplace into the camper. Um, there's a spot here, right underneath the TV. It's just some storage. Um, I found this fireplace that fit the dimensions. Um, and I'm gonna get this thing wired up and installed. I'm here and I'll take you along to show you how I do it. All right, this product here is the uh, fireplace that we're gonna be using. Um, I've gotta take out this cross beam here to, to be able to get it in place. But the link to the description of the product I'm actually using is going to be in the video description below. This, this fireplace here was bought on Amazon for about $90 um, and it came with the book, some mounting screws, some uh, brackets, uh, that, that, that attach to the side and, and that will attach to what we're mounting it to and the fireplace itself. I'm going to go ahead and get it plugged in so you guys see what it looks like. Um, let me go ahead and get it plugged in. Now it does come with a little remote control which is kind of nice to be able to turn it on and it does have features uh, when it comes to how fast the flames go. Um, there's a button for how bright the flames are. Um, there's a timer so you can set a timer for how long you want this thing to go, which, how many hours. Uh, and then there's the heat button, where you can go to low, um, high, or off. So it will actually, has a little heat, heating element right here that'll pump out hot air when wanted. But it's not required, obviously, which is nice. Um, most likely we'll be using this camper more in the winter months. So I wanted to have a built-in electric heater uh, so I didn't have to use the onboard, onboard, onboard furnace. Um, so if this works out good here, uh, I might, it's a big might, put one in the uh, bedroom side, uh, but this is where it's going to go now. So the first step, obviously I'm going to take these doors off, take the center beam out, uh, and then what I'll have to do is get a piece of wood to go to fill in. And I'm actually going to get some faux brick to kind of go around this area to kind of make it look like, you know, a brick fireplace. So. Um, the first step here is to go ahead and get these these uh, pieces removed. So I'll go ahead and get those off. All right. So it's fairly easy to just take the uh, four screws to take the doors off. And then the bar in the middle had two screws at the top and two screws at the bottom. Just took that brace off and now we've got our empty hole. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of uh, thin plywood and I'm gonna measure from the back side here up because there's a little lip and attach it to the inside of this cabinet all the way around. I'm going to obviously cut a hole the perfect size to go around this and then these brackets that came with it will mount to the side and then will attach to the um, attached to the, uh, the the wood and then to hide that I'm gonna get some faux uh, brick and cut that to size to go over that piece of wood to frame around the fireplace so I've got to make a trip to Home Depot where we'll get the measure out what we need and get the product we need it shouldn't be that much what I'm gonna most likely do is just pop a hole up here so I can run the extension cord and just plug it into the existing outlet here I might change that. I might run a permanent, you know, feed a, a, a permanent uh, outlet down here so I don't have to go up, which might be a better idea. Um, and we'll keep that, that socket open for something else if, if needed in the future, but um, it's one of two options. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I, I pulled a couple pieces of uh, furring strip basically to frame the section that the fireplace is going to actually mount to. Um, and it's a little difficult to get this um, screwed in, obviously, from the back side. So I just started it with a screw gun and then had to use a small screwdriver to screw it in on the back side. And then once we get the, um, the fireplace mounted, the weight is gonna wanna pull the top piece back. So what I did is I created a couple um, back braces that's gonna go from the top to the back and screw in. Uh, all this stuff will be hidden. So you're not going to see any of this, so it's a little rough work, but I'm going to go ahead and screw that up into the, uh, 
into the bracing of the cabinet on both sides and then we'll be able to mount the fireplace in, in this little hole that we built. All right, I replaced that socket to tie in and created another socket down here um, through the chase. This way, we don't have to worry about feeding the extension cord from the fireplace up into that. And it leaves me that open socket just in case I need to plug something in. So, got the everything wired up. So go ahead and get this thing mounted and in place. And then we'll move on to the next step. All right, and it's in place. So what I'm probably going to do here now, just looking at it, is I think I want to put another piece across here to because uh, I'm going to be using Velcro to Velcro the, the faux brick onto this. This way I can pull this the Velcro off really easy. I could just pop the panel off if I ever need to get to this, the plug, or anything to change this out. Um, so... Um, I think I'm going to cut a piece to go up to here so it'll velcro up here as well um, to, to brace in between these two. So let's go and get that cut. All right, again, just something for to uh, velcro to. So we're going to get some velcro strips and put maybe three or four spots here on this side and a couple on the, so on the down the sides to help um, keep that in place. So now we're going to measure and try to do as, get as close as I possibly can to the measurement for the... Uh, the faux brick uh, Wayne's coating and put it in here. So this is gonna be a little tricky, but uh, I'll just take some good measurements and hopefully get it right. All right, so I purposely cut this a little bit big, so then I could take the saw and, and, and sand it down and, and grind it down to where it needs to be. So I got it just to the point where it's actually pretty tight in there. So I'm not gonna need the, uh, the Velcro, um, but there it is, there's the finished product. So I think it looked it looks pretty good. Um, I've got a where the uh, where the drawers were. They've got the screw holes that I might want to figure out, sand down, maybe fill in somehow. Um, but uh, it's in place, and there's the heater bit. So if I wanted to turn the heater on, good to go. Blowing out hot air, and it looks pretty good. And it works perfectly, so let's turn this off. I don't want to turn the heat on. Nope. All right. So it's not that difficult. I mean, it took me a little while to get this thing cut out perfectly, uh, but I purposely did it. So, um, it, you know, I did it in such a way where, um, you know, I measured bigger to then cut down a little bit more. So that took me about an hour or so to get that done. But this whole project in general took me probably about three, four hours to do. And cost me twenty dollars for the uh, for the paneling, a full eight by four sheet, which I obviously didn't need that much. And this guy was only eighty bucks. And the other pieces I had was just scrap wood that I had laying around. So um, not that bad to to put an electric heater in and actually add to the uh, overall ambiance of the camper. So make sure you uh, check the link description below for this guy. Uh, follow us. Uh, Click like, subscribe, we'll have more videos, and then check out our website at rdrv.net, rdrv.net. So um, anyway, we'll see you on your next video.